This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, with Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. But we're going now to Uganda, where human rights advocates are condemning President Yoweri Museveni for signing a sweeping anti-LGBTQ measure into law that makes same-sex relationship punishable by life imprisonment. And in some cases, people can get the death penalty. It's one of the most draconian anti-LGBTQ laws in the world. This is Ugandan LGBTQ activist Delavi Kwagala. There's no hope, but where are we supposed to go? You don't want us in your country. You're not giving us jobs. You're not giving us education. You're not giving us medication. You are criminalizing people renting to us. Where do you want us to go? You are arresting us for literally doing nothing, for simply existing. You know, but where are we supposed to go? How did we become refugees in our own countries? We go now to Kampala, Uganda, where we're joined by Pepe Anzima, a human rights advocate. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Pepe. Explain exactly what this law imposes, what it means for the LGBTQ community, really what it means for all of Uganda. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this law is a horrific law, and it's horrific in the sense that um, although the last, the, the, the signed piece does not have the criminalization of identity, already the first versions of, of, of the law had already criminalized identity, and people are being targeted based on their identity. Uh, real or suspected identity. Um, we are recording cases of eviction uh, because landlords have been compelled by this law to report. Uh, even if the law has not yet been gazetted, but people are already taking action. Since March, actually since, since February, when the debate began, uh, we've been seeing a rise in, uh, in, in, in violations towards LGBTIQ persons. Uh, we are seeing people becoming, LGBTIQ persons becoming more uh, homeless. Homelessness has been a real issue for the community, and we are seeing that on the rise because evictions are happening. Um, uh, family banishment is happening, people being kicked out of churches, jobs, schools, young people who are, you know, if in it, who are soft, you know, soft boys or very mas masculine uh, girls are being condemned by this law. Uh, that is already happening, people are deprived of education. Uh, but more so, our fight against HIV is also being impeded by this law because uh, if, if, if you're homosexual and you are found to be HIV positive, that is under aggravated homosexuality, which leads to punishment by death. Already we have laws on, on, on our books that punish uh, homosexual conduct as unnatural offenses. And this has been a law that um, the public has been using to condemn us, to blackmail, to extort money, to extort even same-sex sex, um, and lots of other, uh, you know, uh, violations with a lot of impunity. So that is coming more to light and just increasing in its magnitude right now. And could you talk about what it, uh, what it could possibly be done to challenge this law, either within Uganda or also in uh, international bodies? Uh, absolutely. And just before I answer that, I, I, I need to add the piece about, about, about um, the law seeking uh, claiming to want to protect children, but you'll find that in the law, there's three years uh, imprisonment for any uh, child that is found to be LGBTIQ. So to answer what is being done to counter or mitigate the, the, the dangers of this law, uh, one, we've already put in a petition for an injunction for the implementation of the law because it violates several, several uh, constitutional rights but also 
Uganda is not an island. Uganda is not existing in, 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 in isolation. Uganda is a signatory to many international uh, covenants and, um, um, you know, um, laws. So because of that, uh, we, are, we, are, we are challenging this, but also we are Ugandans. We belong in, we belong in Uganda as advocates, as LGBTIQ persons, as parents of LGBTIQ persons, as mentors, as guides, and whatever of LGBTIQ persons. We belong in this country. We must make sure that the country is uh, comfortable for every Ugandan. So no one should be excluded, um, including on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. On Monday, President Biden called for the immediate repeal of Uganda's severe new anti-gay law threatening to impose sanctions against Uganda. In a statement, he said, quote, the enactment of Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act is a tragic violation of universal human rights, one that's not worthy of the Ugandan people, and one that jeopardizes the prospects of critical economic growth for the entire country. I join with people around the world, including many in Uganda, in calling for its immediate repeal. No one should have to live in constant fear for their life or being subjected to violence and discrimination. It is wrong. Those are the words of Joe Biden, the president. And I wanted to ask you, Pepe, how important it is that there is international condemnation. So you have, on the one hand, Joe Biden condemning this and threatening sanctions. On the other hand, looking at a Vanity Fair piece, um, Anti-gay sentiment mm -hmm. in Uganda has climbed in recent years, due in no small part to American evangelicals, who spent more than $20 million fighting LGBTQ rights in the country between 2007 and 2020, according to The Washington Post. Scott Lively, an American mm -hmm. pastor, spearheaded this effort in the early 2000s, participated in a series of popular anti-gay lectures in Uganda, describing homosexuality as a disease propagated by the West. Several years later, Uganda's parliament proposed the initial legislation known as the Kill the Gays Bill that was supported by a number of American Christian groups and eventually signed into law. So if you can talk about what the U.S. can do, people in the U.S., but also um, what the president of Uganda has done. He uh, sounded like he wanted to sound more moderate by sending the bill back to the legislature, but then signed off on a bill that could give some LGBTQ people the death penalty. Mm. Thank you for that question. And uh, I, 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 I want to say that um, we, as, as much as we welcome uh, President Biden's um, uh, strong and powerful condemnation of this law, uh, I, I think for us as uh, advocates and activists, we've been pushing this. We've been interacting with our uh, U.S. partners and, and telling them that something big and dangerous is coming, and it's coming from your country. Please have ways that you stop it before it comes to our country. And I think that has failed. So as much as I welcome uh, President Biden's um, uh, condemnation, I think there needs to be a lot of work done back home within the United States to make sure that these, um, you know, uh, exporters of hate into a country like Uganda, because Uganda seems to be geographically um, uh, positioned for, you know, for these people to come into our country and, and to test everything negative that they want to test in our country. So that needs to be stopped from the backyard in the United States before it comes this side. So now that we are uh, in, in this quagmire and in this danger, um, we call on the uh, global uh, partners, uh, global citizens to keep condemning this law, to keep putting pressure uh, on, uh, on our leaders to make sure that they honor the international covenants that they've been signatories to and domesticate them and treat their citizens as human beings, not as collateral damage the way uh, our country is doing with the LGBTIQ community. Um, in, two, in 2012, 
uh, my organization that was um, uh, shut down last year in August by, by, by the government, Sexual Minorities Uganda, uh, together with partners, uh, Center for Constitutional Rights, CCR, based in New York, we filed a case against Scott Lively. Um, you know, it's you, you can find the information on CCR's uh, website and, and so on. We did that because for us, it was important to take homophobia or institutionalized homophobia back to where it came from. And it came from Scott Lively, so we wanted to take it back to him. And the courts heard us. Unfortunately, there was a jurisdiction issue. Um, Scott Lively appealed the case, but then again, it was ruled in our favor anyway. So um, these are things that we are going to continue doing, taking homophobia back where it belongs, even if it means us losing our lives. Yes, government wants to uh, put you know, advocates and actual LGBTIQ persons uh, to death, but we are also prepared until the last drop of our blood, as long as we live our truth in this country. And Pepe, I wanted to ask you, uh, the U.S. government has significant uh, uh, influence in, uh, in Uganda, uh, about a billion dollars in, uh, in development aid from the United States uh, to Uganda. And also, the current government has played a key role as an ally of the United States uh, in Africa, even pro providing some troops in Somalia. Could you talk about the, the relations between the Ugandan government and the U.S.? in recent years? Yeah, I, I think the, um, the relation between Uganda and the United States uh, dates back to, you know, the 60s. Um, and it, it, it's been that one of mutual um, conversations and um, uh, engagements. So in the recent years, I, I, I think we saw... Um, the fact that Uganda has really been supportive of uh, some, um, you, 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 uh, rather the U.S. has been very supportive of some of, you know, backing up our health, um, uh, our health sector, our um, law enforcement, and so on. I think th th there's been that kind of um, smooth, but not so smooth uh, relations, and especially when it comes to human rights, um, that's when our government says, "Oh, here, don't cross." We can talk about um, we can talk about Somalia, we can talk about South Sudan, we can talk about all the regional, uh, you know, security issues, but do not talk about homosexuality. Don't we, we are a sovereign country and so on. But you are a sovereign country that does not safeguard the sovereignty of your citizens, and when your partner in trade partner in, in health uh, sort of cautions you a little bit to tell you that, hey, you're going off a little bit here. Let's, let's let, you know, let's stick to taking care of the citizenry. Then uh, we, we always, as, as, as Uganda, we, we, we always tend to um, uh, curve uh, back and start to show our power. I think there needs to be, uh, we know that the, 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 there's been conversations uh, happening uh, between the two governments, and it probably got to a point where there was a, a stalemate, and uh, we are seeing this law being signed. I don't think that uh, President Museveni um, ignores the plight of uh, LGBTIQ persons, but I'm also afraid that he's a politician. He will do um, whatever you know, plays into whatever he sees, whatever he envisions. Unfortunately, um, you know, when the two governments disagree, although we are seeing that the U.S. is trying to safeguard our, uh, our rights, I think it gets complicated because either way, we end up as collateral uh, damage uh, within within these conversations and uh, engagements between the countries. Pepe Anzima, I want to thank you for being with us, human rights advocate, speaking to us from Kampala, Uganda.